In this video, we're going to talk about the intersection of an absolute value function and a line. So first question is, given an absolute value curve, y equals absolute value of ax plus b, and a straight line, y equals cx plus d, how many points of intersection are possible? Okay, well, think about what an absolute value curve looks like. Any absolute value curve of this form looks like a v-shape. So let's draw a v-shape here. Now let's think about all the configurations in which a straight line may or may not intersect this v-shape. Okay, so first of all, maybe the straight line cuts right across the v like this. In this case, we have two points of intersection. But there are other possibilities too. So let's draw another V shape for our absolute value here. And let's try to orient the line a little bit differently so we get uh, something different, something different other than two points of intersection. Maybe instead of cutting fully across the V, it only enters the V, but isn't flat enough to make it out of the V. So maybe the line looks like this. In this case, we only have one point of intersection. But hold on, there's still one more case. So let's go ahead and draw another V here. So say this is the absolute value function, and can we orient this line any differently so that we get a different number of points of intersection? Um, well, what if the line just goes like this? It doesn't even run into the V. It doesn't even intersect the V. So that would correspond to zero points of intersection. So how many points of intersection are possible? Well, there's either 0, 1, or 2 points of intersection. All right, so now let's actually tackle a concrete problem where we have to find the actual points of intersection of an absolute value curve and a line. So we've just got a standard absolute value curve, y equals absolute value of x, and then a line, y equals a half x plus one. And why don't we start off by just graphing these two? Okay, so standard absolute value curve, that just looks like a v, and it has a slope of one going to the right. It's like the line y equals x, so let's get that slope of one, up one, over one, up one, over one, so just draw that line on through there, but it's actually a ray because it stops at the origin, and then on the negative side it goes the opposite way. It's a slope of negative one this way, so uh, down one over one, so starting here, here, let's go ahead and draw that line through those points, here we go, we've got it. Now let's draw the actual line here, y equals a half x plus 1. So we know we've got a y-intercept of 1, okay, and then the slope is a half, so up 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2, the next point is right here. Why don't we go ahead and draw that line then? All right, so it goes through here and also back this way. All right, so there's our line. Okay, so let's label our points of intersection here. We see one right here, and that looks like the point one, two, one, two. So that looks like the point two, two. And then there's another point of intersection, but that's a little bit harder to tell what it is from the graph. In order to tell what that point is, why don't we solve for the points of intersection algebraically? Um, now, before we get into that, let's just make a note of what we've got. We know there should be two points of intersection. One of them should be 2, 2, as long as we've drawn our graph right. And then the other one, um, we'll have to figure out what that is algebraically, because it's kind of hard to tell from the graph. Something, something. We'll just leave that blank for now. All right, so now we'll go ahead and solve algebraically. And the way we can solve algebraically is just by setting the y-coordinates equal to each other. 
So we'll just set absolute value of x equal to the line a half x plus 1. And now, as we know for solving absolute value equations, we need to get the absolute value on one side alone, and then say that the inside of the absolute value can be positive or negative of the other side. We've got the absolute value alone already, so we can just go ahead and say that x, that's inside the absolute value, can be positive or negative of the right-hand side. So why don't we break up into two equations here. First equation here will be the inside of the absolute value x is equal to positive of the right-hand side. So just the regular right-hand side, a half x plus 1. And then the second equation will be x equals negative of the right-hand side, so negative of a half x plus 1. Now why don't we go ahead and solve both these equations. Okay, so let's start with this left equation, x equals a half x plus 1. Fractions are kind of rough to deal with, so why don't we go ahead and multiply the, by the denominator of the fraction to cancel out the fraction. So multiply everything in this equation by 2, and that'll cancel out that denominator in the bottom. So we'll have 2x as equal to, well, that fraction just cancels out when it's multiplied by 2, so we'll just have x and then plus 1 times 2. So 2x equals x plus 2. This equation then is pretty straightforward to solve. We can get x alone on one side by just subtracting that x off to the left-hand side here. So let's go ahead and do that. So 2x minus x just gives us x equals, well, the x minus x cancels out on the right-hand side and we just have two. All right, so if x equals two and we know that the point has to lie on both of these functions, then we can just go ahead and plug in x is two into either of these functions to get the y value. Why don't we choose the absolute value? Because that's the simplest. So we know that y equals absolute value of two, which is, well, just two. So that gives us our point two, two. Okay, so now let's solve the second equation. So first of all, why don't we distribute that minus sign over to both of these terms? We get x equals minus a half x and then minus one. And again, to make that fraction disappear, let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2, the denominator in the fraction. That way we'll just get 2x is equal to negative x minus 2. Then we can get x alone by just adding x to both sides. That'll cancel out the x, the minus x on the right-hand side. We do that, cancels out, we just get 3x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so then to get x alone, just divide by 3 on both sides, and then we get x equals negative 2 thirds. Okay, so x equals negative 2 thirds. Again, we can find y by just plugging it in to either of these equations. Let's just choose the absolute value. y equals absolute value of negative 2 thirds, which is just positive 2 thirds. So there we go, the point is negative two-thirds, positive two-thirds. We can label that on our graph here, negative two-thirds, positive two-thirds, and we can also put that in our solution, negative two-thirds, positive two-thirds. And there we go, we've got our two points of intersection. Now, before we move on, one neat thing to notice here is that the equations actually correspond to branches of the absolute value curve. There is a positive branch here, and then there's a negative branch here. And this here is the positive equation. We just took the positive of the right-hand side, and this is the negative equation, where we took the negative of the right-hand side. And now the positive equation here that just gives us the point of intersection of the line with the positive branch of the absolute value. Likewise, the negative equation, the solution to that just gives us the point of intersection of the line with the negative branch of the absolute value function. Here's a final example. Here we want to find the solutions of this absolute value equation, absolute value of 2x plus 3, then minus 5 is equal to 2x. 
And to do this, why don't we translate this problem into some problems that we're familiar with? Why don't we translate it into the intersection of an absolute value with the line? Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to get the absolute value on its own side. So why don't we start by doing that? Let's go ahead and add five to both sides. That'll cancel out that minus five on the left-hand side, and then we'll just have the absolute value alone. We'll have absolute value of two x plus three is equal to two x plus five. So now this problem of finding the solutions to this equation turns into a problem of find the points of intersection of the absolute value function here, y equals absolute value of 2x plus 3, and the line, which is just given by the right-hand side here, y equals 2x plus 5. So why don't we go ahead and sketch a graph of these two equations. First of all, let's, let's sketch the graph of y equals absolute value of 2x plus 3. Um, but in order to do that, we need to know where it hits the x-axis. There's some horizontal shifting going on here. So why don't we first solve for the x-intercept? Um, so let's solve for where the inside of the absolute value is 0. That's where 2x plus 3 equals 0, which means 2x equals negative 3, which means x equals negative 3 halves, just dividing by 2. Um, so that's, that's going to be where it hits the x-axis here, at x equals negative 3 halves. And that's like negative 1 and a half, like negative 1.5, so that's where we're looking at. Okay, now the slope of the absolute value function is 2. There's a 2, that's the coefficient on the x here, so that's the rise over run on the positive branch of the absolute value function. So go up to 1, 2 and then over one. So the next point will be over here that we can draw a line through. And why don't we plot a few more points just so we get it perfectly right. Okay, so let's draw um, the, the ray actually through, through these points. That'll be the positive branch of the absolute value. All right, and let's do the same thing on the other side. On the negative side, it has negative slope. Um, so we're going down to over one so that puts us our, our point over here, then over here, then over here. Let's go ahead and draw in that, uh, that ray here. So line it up and here we go. There is our graph of the absolute value function. And now we can go ahead and draw the graph of the line and the line y equals two x plus five. We know that has a y intercept of five. So let's count up one, two, three, four, five. So it hits right here and it goes through that with a slope of two. Um, so rise over one, rise up two, over one, um, down two, back one, keep going like this. And let's go ahead and graph that. All right, so that looks something like this. All right, so we see that there looks like there's only one point of intersection. And that point looks like it's two in the negative x direction. So it's a negative two comma, and then one up, negative two, one. That looks to be up at the point. And there's not any other points of intersection because this line is parallel to the positive branch of the absolute value. So it's not going to intersect at all because it has the same slope, slope of two. They're parallel, they don't intersect. It's just that point there that intersects with the negative branch. To double check ourselves that this point is in fact negative two, one, we can go ahead and algebraically solve for the solution here. Um, and we can also take advantage of the fact that we know that um, the, since the line is, is crossing the negative branch of the of the absolute value function, we only need to worry about the negative equation. So let's go ahead and solve that negative equation. The negative equation is just given by taking that inside of the absolute value, so 2x plus 3, and setting it equal to the negative of the right-hand side, so negative of 2x plus 5. Let's go ahead and solve. 
So first of all, distribute that minus sign. So 2x plus 3 equals negative 2x minus 5. And now let's get our, our variable over. So let's add 2x to both sides, plus 2x plus 2x. The result of doing that, we get 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 5. And now let's go ahead and get that 3 out from the side with the x. So subtract 3 from both sides, minus 3, minus 3. The result of that is just 4x equals minus 5 minus 3 is minus 8. So now we just divide by 4, divide by 4, get our x alone. And that tells us x equals negative 8 over 4, or just negative 2. And that makes sense with what we've got so far. Great, so let's just get the y. So y is equal to, why don't we just go ahead and plug it into one of these, these functions here. We can choose the, the absolute value or the line. The line looks a bit simpler in this case. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So 2 times negative 2, that's what we're plugging in for x, then plus 5, which is equal to, uh, well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then we're adding 5, and negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. So there we go. This gives us the point negative 2, 1. So there we go. Our graph is right. It has the point negative 2, 1, and the x coordinate of that is the solution to our equation in x here, negative 2. So that's our solution. Solution is x equals negative 2. Great, so now we see how graphing the intersections of absolute value functions can tell us how many solutions we will find if we solve algebraically, and even let us make reasonable guesses at those solutions. In the future, we'll learn more about the absolute value function, including how to graph absolute value of a nonlinear function.